Croeso Irvisil Synod. Welcome to the first of our United Reformed Church Wales Synod Sundays. I'm Simon, I'm the Synod moderator, and I want to encourage us to share this act of worship. The idea grew from feedback from the October 2020 Synod meeting when people said they wanted more opportunities to connect as people across the Wales Synod. The idea of having a recorded service whenever there's a fifth Sunday in the month came from a local church minister and this is the fruit. Some of us remember when groups from around the Synod circulated services on paper to be used on second Sundays. These videos seem to be appropriate for our times and to fit the need of this moment. Sharing in the service reminds us of our different circles of belonging in the church, from local to synod to belonging to the body of Christ through space and time. This service can be part of local church worship, broadcast as part of online worship, or viewed by households on the Synod YouTube channel. May it help us to give thanks to God and find energy for being partners in God's work in the world. May it help us to feel part of something beyond ourselves. People from different local congregations or pastorates will lead the worship each time, and this time it's St David's Uniting Church taking the lead. Happens to be the church where I'm a member, so I'm helping with the prayers later on. But for now, I hand over to Michael Howells, one of the elders, for him to call us to worship. Sing aloud for joy. Conjure magnificent melodies, create meteoric metaphors. Reach for the heights of beauty and the depths of drama. Use everything to hand, all that you can make and all that you can imagine. Stardust and earth dreams, the music of the spheres and the heartbeat of silence, the hunger of the heart and the hope everlasting. Match the roar of oceans and the majesty of the mountains. Let all things magnify holy might. Let all things reflect holy light. For nothing is apart from and all is a part of God whose immensity, mercy and justice are forever. Boradar, good morning, and welcome to St David's Uniting Church Pontypridd, where we come to our first hymn of praise on this Synod Sunday, Cumronda.
from Rhonda there. A hymn of praise that was first sung in a chapel just a mile up the valley from here, 113 years ago. The hymn writer, John Hughes, was just one of the many local residents who found joy in song. Others have included Evan and James James, the composers of the National Anthem, opera singers Geraint Evans and Stuart Burroughs, and a certain Thomas Woodward from Treforest, or Sir Tom Jones, as some know him. But what about you? Where have you found joy this week? As part of our Sunday services, we spend some time sharing and reflecting upon the good news we've experienced during the week. And so we're going to do this together now, as we take a minute to reflect on where we've encountered God's good news this week, and to thank God for that. Perhaps for you, good news was to be found in the love of family or friends. Perhaps it was in conversation with strangers. Perhaps it was in the beauty of God's creation, in the pleasure of music, in the comfort of a good cup of tea. Whatever it was, let's share a moment of stillness to think about this before Linda Ball, the church secretary here, leads us in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, thank you for the glimpses of goodness that we've seen in the last week. The food and drink which have sustained our bodies, the friends, family and strangers who have blessed our daily living, the words of hope that have graced our hearing. As the days get longer and an end to our current restrictions get closer, we thank you for your love, which has sustained and surprised us through the dark days. We thank you that there is light in the darkness and the darkness can never ever put it out. On the day in which we are gathering across the Synod, across this great land, to praise you, we thank you for the rich cultural diversity of this nation where people experience you differently, worship you differently, serve you differently. Help us not to use our differences as excuses to build walls that separate, but rather to see the world as a magnificent tapestry of colours and patterns where everyone is linked to their neighbours, woven together by your strong love. In this beautiful world of vibrant colour and light, forgive us when we bleach it into black and white, right and wrong, us and them. Forgive us when we walk away from neighbours in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. Forgive us when we forget your love for creation, for all people, for us. God of grace, we soak ourselves in your forgiveness. As you scatter the mist from the hills, rid us of any shame, guilt or fear. Help us to believe that, as children of your love, we are free to begin again, to love and be loved. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. One of the things I'm most looking forward to with these uh, Synod services is the chance to enjoy a snapshot of how URC siblings worship in different locations. Sharing these services together, I hope we'll get the opportunity to witness all kinds of different worship styles and preferences, alongside tales of how the church is sharing in God's mission of love to the communities around us. With this in mind, we thought we'd sh briefly share with you something of what we do at this church uh, and I know different versions of this are done throughout the country. It's called This Time Tomorrow, and at St David's Uniting Church, it usually takes the form of asking different church members ten questions in our all-age time, some which enable a sharing of one's faith, others which are just revealing and interesting, a couple which are just plain silly. In case you're interested, we've included the ten questions that we use with the script of this, today's service, but for now, to get a feel of it with the time in which we've got, I'm going to ask church member Nathan Hughes 
just three of our usual 10 questions. Well, thanks so much for doing this, Nathan. No problem. Well, first question then, Nathan. This time tomorrow, what will you be doing and how can we pray for you in that? Uh, well, this time tomorrow, I should be almost finishing my shift at work. Uh, so I'll be in my truck washing the, the back end of it out from the day's work. Uh, so hopefully I'll be going home. <laughs> so I guess you could just pray as with anything in my work. It, it can be quite dangerous out, out on the road. So just just uh, that there is a safe day. And do you mind me asking what, what is it you do? What, what driving do you do? Yeah, I, I drive at the moment a concrete mixer. So I'm taking concrete back and forth, high rise building sites in Cardiff city centre. So, Fab? All fun. Every day is different. Okay, so question two. What difference does attending our services make to the rest of your week? Yeah, it makes quite a big difference. Uh, I mean, pre-COVID, uh, obviously coming here every Sunday morning and in, in the evenings as well, uh, it just sort of gives you an escape from everyday life and somewhere where you can just refresh yourself and realign yourself really in, in your faith for the week ahead, um, which, which obviously was always good. Uh, it's a bit different now during Covid, it's all online, so you lose really the sense of fellowship that, that you used to get in, in, in a physical building. Um, and, and how I partake in it has changed as well, as I, I'm often driving now and I've just got it on through the radio, listening to it um, after it's happened and stuff like that. So yeah, it makes a big difference really, it just keeps me grounded really and, and refreshed. And, and it's nice to hear that we're accompanying you on your, on your travels. Yeah, that you, you've been at all the jobs I've been at. I've had you <laughs> playing out in different parts. I've had to turn the, the, the singing down at some point during when I'm at the job at the sites. Um, so yeah, you've you've been all over. <laughs> no kiss at Kiss FM. It's us. On no, the it's it's like David tonight, Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, third and final question, then Nathan. What's your favourite hymn or worship song? I mean, there's so many to choose from, but. Overriding, I always go as a go-to to 10,000 Reasons. Um, it's just, it just speaks to me, that song, so I, I would go with that. Fab, Joch, Nathan, we appreciate this. And I encourage us all to pray for Nathan and everyone in our communities who have to work outside the home at the moment. But for now, we have Nathan's uh, favourite worship song as we listen or sing along to 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul Worship His holy name Your holy name And on that day When my 
strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before I'll worship your holy name I'll worship your holy name Yes, I'll worship your holy name We come now to our scripture reading for today. And seeing as this Tuesday is the Feast of Candlemas, a day on which our Christian siblings across the world will be marking the presentation of Christ in the temple, we thought we'd join them just a little early. So we head to Jerusalem and spot a young mother and her husband making their way to the temple with their tiny baby. I wonder what God will say to you in today's reading. Hyd at y ddeunfed, cyflwyno Iesu yn y deml. Pan y saith amser pyridigaeth yn ôl cyfraith Moses, cymerodd ei rieni ef i fyny i Jerusalem yw gyflwyno i'r arglwydd, yn unol ar hyn sydd wedi ei ysgrifennu yng nghyfraith yr arglwydd, pob gwrw cyntaf yn edig, fe'i gelwyr yn sanctaidd i'r arglwydd. Ac i roi offrwm yn unol ar hyn sydd wedi ei ddweud yng nghyfraith yr arglwydd par o dyrtirod neu ddau giw colome. Yn awr yr oedd dyn yn Jerusalem o'r enw Simeon, dyn cyfiawn a diwiol oedd hwn, yn disgwyl am ddiddanwch Israel, ac yr oedd yr ysbryd glân arno. Yr oedd wedi cael datguddiad gan yr ysbryd glân. Na welai farwolaeth cyn gweld mesaia'r arglwydd. Daeth i'r deml dan arweiniad yr ysbryd. A phan ddaeth yr ieni a'r plentyn iesu i mewn, i wneud ynglyn ag ef yn unol ag arfer y gyfraith, cymerodd Simeon ef i'w freichiau a bendithiodd ddiw gan ddweud. Yn awr, a rwyt yn gollwng dy was yn rhydd o arglwydd, mewn tangnefedd yn unol ath gair. Oherwydd y mae fy llygaid wedi gweld deiach awdwriaeth a fyr paraist yng ngwydd yr holl bobloedd. Golleini i fod yn ddatguddiad i'r cenhedloedd ac yn ogoniant i thbobl Israel. Yr oedd ei dad a'i fam yn rhyfeddu at y pethau oedd yn cael eu dweud amdano. Yna, bendithiodd Simeon hwy a dywedodd wrth ffair a'i fam. Wele, gosodwyd hwn er cwymp a chyfodiad llawer yn Israel ac i fod yn arwydd a wrthwynebu'r. A thithau, trywennu'r dy enaid di gan gleddyf, fel y datguddi'r meddyliau calonau lawer. Yr oedd proffwydes hefyd, Anna, Merchfaniel o Lwythaser. Yr oedd hon yn oedranus iawn, wedi byw saith mlynedd gyda'i gŵr ar ôl priodi, ac wedi parhau'n weddw nes a'i bod yn awr yn bedair a phedwar i gain oed. Ni byddai byth yn ymadael ar deml, ond yn addoli gan ymprydio a gweddio ddydd a nos. Ar awr honno, safodd hi ger llaw a moli diw, a llyfari am y plentyn wrth bawb 
oedd yn disgwyl o'r rhyddhad Jerusalem. Wedi iddynt gyflawni popeth yn unol a chyfraith yr arglwydd. Dychwelsant i Galilea i Nazareth i trefi hunain. Yr oedd y plentyn yn tyfu yn gryf ac yn llawn doeth uneb ac yr oedd ffafr diw arno. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, reading verses 22 to 40. Jesus is presented in the temple. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to, Jer to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man called Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon had said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophetess, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. When Joseph and Mary had finished doing all that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown of Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom and God's blessings were upon him. Thanks be to God. I know I'm not on my own in saying that there are some passages in scripture with which I struggle and others to which I'm instantly drawn. Well, today's one, Jesus' presentation in the temple falls squarely in the latter. So far in Luke's account of things, we've heard songs from Mary and Zachariah, encountered shepherds and angels, welcomed Jesus into the world, and now, some 40 days later, this tiny babe born into squalor is brought to the big, bustling temple in Jerusalem. As observant first century Jews, Joseph and Mary have made the journey to the city to present their child and offer a sacrifice as a symbol that he belonged to God. Let's not dwell on the fact that this was only required for firstborn males and save this smashing of the patriarchy for another day. Look at any artistic depiction of the passage 
and you'll see Simeon, Simeon depicted as an elderly man, usually stooped and sporting the beard of which any 21st century hipster would be proud. Maybe he was an older man, but scripture doesn't actually specify his age. So it's equally possi possible that he was a much younger man with less impressive facial hair. Whatever the case, we're told that the Holy Spirit was certainly upon Simeon, gave revelations to him and guided him into the temple courts when the Holy Family arrived. It's here that he sees Jesus, takes him in his arms, praises God and blesses the family. Then Anna steps out the shadows. Unlike Simeon, we are told that Anna was, well, I was always taught that it's rude to talk about a lady's age. So let's just say that she would have been at the very front of the queue for a vaccine. We're also told that she's of the tribe of Asher, who generally lived in the north of the country. So it's likely that Anna moved to Jerusalem to give her life to temple worship, which fits with Luke's description of her, saying that she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Fair play to her. One day then, Anna is going about her prayerful business when she sees these nervous new parents enter with their child. Anna walks over and glimpses something astounding about the child. So much so that she gives thanks to God and tells everyone looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem about the baby. Quite the day at the temple. Now it can be easy to romanticise characters such as Simeon and Anna and consign them to a bygone age of serene saints. But I reckon that the churches in our synod have a few Simeons and Annas within them. Take Simeon. Spirit-led, certainly, and maybe also a little overzealous in his actions. Just imagine Mary and Joseph coming to the temple, overawed by its splendour, the promises of the angels still ringing in their ears, inevitably sleep-deprived, as all new parents are, shattered by their long journey, walking wearily inside, and suddenly this stranger skips over, scoops up their baby, praising God and declaring odd blessings at them. Perhaps you have a Simeon or two in your church. Someone who is devout and enthusiastic and a generally wonderful human being, but whom you might also have to remind to give newcomers a bit of space that not all parents want strangers picking up their children. And just one more thing, Simeon. Love the idea of blessing strangers, really do, absolutely fab. Just maybe lose those words about swords piercing souls in the future. May God bless those impetuous, spirit-led members of our churches who will remind us that God is still speaking today. May God bless the patient, quietly faithful members too. I hope it's not wrong to admit that there's something of Anna that reminds me of my nan when she was in the early stages of dementia. Just look at how beautiful those flowers are, my nan would say as we drove past an old roundabout that I'd never paid any attention to before. Or oh, look at how red this strawberry is, she'd marvel while mine was already in my stomach. She would see things that others couldn't or didn't, and like Anna, she would point them out to anyone close by. I hope you know a few precious, perceptive Annas in your congregation. Those faithful women and men who can glimpse the divine presence in people and places that others overlook. All of which brings me to the three things that we might want to take away from this passage today. Well, it can't legally be a reformed reflection without three takeaways, can it? So we begin by attesting that God is a God of surprises. First century talk of the Messiah was generally about military victories and a liberated land. And yet when Simeon sees a poor couple of the smallest of sacrifices as they present their baby at the temple, a baby who would have been making all the usual sounds and smells that babies do, Simeon knows that he has seen God's Messiah the light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. No one could have predicted the Messiah coming like that. One might definitely say that that was unprecedented. Our scriptures tell us time and time again that God does not work in ways in which we would plan or predict, but rather through surprising people, practices and places. 
that God transforms the world through poor babies, radical rabble-rousers, crucified criminals, and Emmaus-bound strangers. God is a God of surprises. So may we not fear them, but seek God's presence within them. God is also a God of solidarity. When philosophers and religious leaders were teaching that human flesh was defiled and dirty, something to overcome and certainly to be kept away from God, God decided to slip into our skin and move into the neighbourhood. That's the scandal of the incarnation, that that baby gurgling in the temple that day was God incarnate, showing us once again that God doesn't love things by excluding them, but by uniting with them. And so, just as Joseph and Mary took the Christ child with them as they left the temple and started out on that long, hard road ahead of them, so too Christ is with us in the mess and magnificence of our daily living. I will be with you till the end of the age, the child then grown up would tell his friends. Even in the darkest of our days, let us not forget that. So a God of surprises, of solidarity and of salvation. My eyes have seen your salvation, Simeon says, holding the 40-day-old Jesus in his arms, suggesting that salvation is perhaps more about who Jesus is rather than what he does. But whatever our views about the hows and whos, in Christ, God saves us from a life devoid of meaning and a world devoid of love. In Christ, God saves us from the stories that tell us that might is right, life is cheap, and only the fittest will survive. In Christ, God saves us from the despair in life or fear of death, for no situation is beyond hope, no place beyond transformation, no life beyond redemption with God. So, after all that, it's like I said at the very beginning, Simeon and Anna saw Jesus for who he was and told everyone around them the good news. May we now go and do likewise. Amen. Before one of our own Simeon-styled, spirit-led, age, undetermined members of our congregation lead us in our prayers for ourselves and for others, let's just take a moment to catch our breath and reflect on what God might be saying to us today. Can you think of a Simeon or Anna in your congregation? If so, how might you show them your gratitude and encouragement? Where have you seen the God of surprises at work in your life? What situation do you need to bring to the God of solidarity and salvation today? How will you share the good news of Christ with others this week? Let's pray. God who shows up to us and for us. We pray to you and to offer ourselves as part of the answers to the prayers of others. We reflect on the presentation of Jesus in the temple as a prompt to our prayers. So we think of Joseph and Mary offering two doves, the sacrifice of poorer people, and we pray for those struggling to make ends meet. We pray for poorer countries, lacking vaccines and technical treatments for seriously ill people. We think of the baby Jesus, passed from loving parent to devout person praying your blessing. Jesus held safe in their arms. And we pray for ourselves and all those who need to rest held secure in love and blessing amidst the risks of living.
We think of the reactions of Anna and Simeon and pray for babies growing up at this time without seeing the smiles of strangers behind the masks. We pray for elderly people waiting for vaccinations and those who are next in line. We pray for family life and the family life expressed in the wider community of younger and older, couples and single and widowed, all lived out in a world of political tensions and economic inequality. We think of the hope and the shadow of the sword of sadness in the words of Anna and Simeon. We think of the bittersweet mixture of life in all its ups and downs and all its fullness. And we pray about the people we know who need our prayers. We pray for those who grieve, who grieve for the loss of loved ones and who grieve over the state of the world. We pray for those who work to care for others, who work for a fairer world and who work so that others may be the best that they can be. And we gather all these prayers in the pattern of prayer which Jesus gave us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today is one that exemplifies the musical mastery that seems to bless the people of Pontypridd as we sing a song of praise whose tune will be familiar to you, but whose words were written by one of our own church members, John Henson. We sing together the sharp winds of change. The sharp winds of change are now sweeping our land. It's you, God, we recognize your spirit's hand. She's waking a dull and out Nothing is certain, or rigid, or safe. Welcome God, welcome you, welcome Spirit again. In your life, in your love, never one day the same. We join as your family to work and adore your great world to care for joy and explore. We thank you for leading us right where we are, for giving the courage to do and to dare, for lifting our hearts when our feelings were low, your laughter to Spirit again in your life, in your love, never one day the same. We join as your family to work and adore 
your great world to care for, enjoy and explore. Through many a torment and many an ill, you've led us through valley and over the hill. We've marked pleasant vistas and frightening scenes. The country we long for will outshine our dreams. Welcome, welcome God, welcome you, welcome Spirit again. In your life, in your love, never one day the same. We join as your family to work and adore your great worlds to care for, enjoy and explore. Today you are with us, inspiring our song. You bind us together to know we belong. Disturbing our ways, sure sign of your spirit, God, yours be the praise. Welcome God, welcome you, welcome spirit again. In your life, in your love, never one day the same. We join as your family to work and adore your great world to care for, enjoy and explore. Well, our service here is coming to an end, but our service to God starts afresh. And so may God bless our eyes so that we might glimpse the divine in surprising people and places. May God bless our ears that we might hear the song of the Spirit around us and within us. And may God bless our bodies, minds and souls, that we might share and show God's extravagant love with all we meet today, tomorrow and every tomorrow. Amen. <laughs>